This episode of the DLU podcast is brought to you by Goalie Nutrition. As someone who's used Goalie for quite some time, I can tell you that they're not only very good, but they're very beneficial. My favorite are the Super Green Gummies. The Super Green Gummies are uniquely crafted with a spectrum of essential nutrients such as vitamins A, B12, folic acid, and theamine. It supports a healthy liver function, healthy nervous and immune system, digestive health, a boost to your metabolism, and overall health and well-being. There are no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or colors from artificial sources. They're vegan-friendly, gluten-free, and gelatin-free. All loyal listeners of the DLU podcast get a special 10% discount at checkout. Go to Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. That's Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. This podcast is a Believe Network and Luciete production. Welcome to another edition of the DLU Podcast brought to you by Believe Network. I'm your host, Derek T. Lewis. And before I proceed, I want to apologize to all of the dads out there for not wishing you all a happy Father's Day of the close of last week's show. So with that being said, I hope you all forgive me. I hope you all had an amazing Father's Day. I actually had a happy Father's Day. Now, again, I am not a biological dad. I'm actually an uncle dad. And I spent some really, really good quality time with my great niece last Sunday on Father's Day. We had brunch and it was was an amazing uh, meal. And we really had an opportunity to just catch up on everything. So, you know, that's my buddy, my best friend. And I'm glad we were able to um, get that quality time in for sure. But this week's episode, um, you know, as I said last week, you know, I had a a health and wellness um, episode where we we talked about you know, the, the alkaline water and things like that. And I wanted to continue that theme of wellness, but we're talking about mental wellness, mental health. And I have grief and empowerment coach Regina Grizzle on this episode, and she's from choosingserenity.org. And we talk about a lot of aspects and how we deal with grief, the different types of grief. And we talk about how we empower ourselves to get back, you know, when, when we're down, how do we get back up? You know what I mean? So I, I really think that, and all aspects of wellness is important. So not only is are we doing as far as our physical health and everything, but also our mental health. I think that's extremely important to talk about. So let's not wait any longer. My interview with Regina Grizzle starts right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you on the DLU podcast, grief counselor, Regina Grizzle. Thank you for coming. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me. All right. So let's get started. Let's just talk about early life. You know, you say you're a very proud New Yorker. You grew up in New York City. So let's talk about growing up in New York City, family, siblings. Um. Well, I don't have siblings. I'm an only child. Okay. A only child that was spoiled, 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 spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was it was pretty interesting living there. It was, you know, it was normal to me. It's my life, right? Very, everything was pretty good. We, um, I was raised by a single parent. Okay. Um, and um, all my education was done in New York. It was it was a very I had a very adventurous childhood. Very lots of fun. I had lots of friends, especially since I was an only child. I tried hard to make friends because sure. yeah it was you know that's that's sometimes pretty lonely but again it's normal for you so you get used to it for sure so speaking of school so let's talk about you know as far as what type of student you were um and how and 
taking things to the next level in regard from an educator's educational standpoint. So how was school growing up for you? Um, school was, school was good. I went to, um, school for nursing because my intention was to be a surgical nurse. Mm -hmm. So, um, I went to a nursing high school, but then when I graduated and went to college, I went for speech pathology and audiology. So my life took a whole turn. My mom became ill, so I couldn't, I couldn't finish. I ended up having to take care of her. Oh, I see. And what, and what college did you go? Did you attend? I went to Kingsboro. Okay. Kingsboro in Brooklyn. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So you're talking about speech. So you're talking about you're talking about speech therapy. So what drew you to that? Um, I thought it was very, very interesting in how your speech and your hearing is so interwoven. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting to me to, um, it's like when someone who couldn't hear well, right. Once the apparatus was done. And they heard, I noticed that even their speech was different. Mm. It was just really very interesting to me. Got it. And Got I it. think at that time, anything that was in the medical field mm -hmm. drew my attention. And what was it? I mean, just, and what, I guess, what drew you to that? In the, what drew you to the medical field? Um, like I said, because I wanted to be a surgical nurse, um, and, and once, once I graduated from college, I'm sorry, once I graduated from high school mm -hmm. and I still was interested in the medical field. So I think that's what drew me to the, um, the speech pathology and audiology. Got it. Got it. So you ultimately ended up getting a job in the medical field. So what were you, so what were you doing did, along those I lines? Did. Yeah, I, um, I did a few things. Nursing assistant. Mm -hmm. I was a, um, oh my gosh, a transcriptionist mm -hmm. where I would have to record the doctor's findings when they did findings on the patients. I did that in Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center in the largest actually cancer center in Northeast. I did that there for quite some time. I also worked in Bellevue and I was there doing somewhat the same thing for quite a while. And then I stopped working for someone and realized that working for myself was much more interesting. <laughs> yeah, 100 and it, and people find the satisfaction in that, you know, as far as saying, "Hey, I could do what I'm doing and just do it on my own." So I totally exactly. get what you're saying. Exactly. exactly. Now, now you became a mom and you ended up getting married. So a little bit of a detour, so to speak, in regards to what you were what you were wanting to accomplish. But talk about how how did that that life change for you, and how did that change your life? Yeah, because that was not in the cards. I never really wanted to get married. Why not? <laughs> never. Oh. And I met my husband in the hospital in Sloan. Mm. And yeah, and um, I. <laughs> It's so funny. I never, my mind was, I never wanted to get married. Mm -hmm. And when he asked, I said, I will marry you only if you understand that I just want to do it for two years. And he was like, excuse me? I'm wait, like, you mean, wait, 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 you mean stay married for two years? Yeah. Why two years and not forever? 
no, because I just, again, I didn't want to get married. And at that time, all my, my friends, my family, my cousins, everyone was getting married. And mm -hmm. I said to him, I just want to see what the hoopla is about. Right. And it only, you know, I said, really, I'm giving you two, but it would only take a couple of months for me to see. And of course, he looked at me like I was crazy. He told me I was crazy. And he said, <laughs> um, I'll make a deal with you. And I said, oh, OK. He said, come back in 30 years and we'll discuss it. I'm like, that doesn't sound like a deal to me. That sounds like <laughs> entrapment. <laughs> sounds like entrapment. And um, believe it or not, I learned you definitely have to be careful on what you say because my baby left me when within 30 years. And now, so that was going to, that was going to be my next question. So what ultimately led you to take the grief course? Him passing. Mm. Him passing. Um, it was so very, very extraordinarily difficult for me. Extraordinary extraordinarily difficult and I didn't really have any support um, which is what led me to want to do this for people because I think it's really no one should have to go through something like that alone and most people don't for sure and um I was trying to go it alone since I'm so used to doing everything alone doing everything on my own getting it done I'm that person I'm gonna get it done right but that's a very different animal and it was far bigger than I am I see and I um I just kept hearing I know it sounds odd because it sounded odd to me I heard a voice say take a grief class mm -hmm. and I'm like what and I'm looking around there's no one in here but me and I ignored it and I heard it again and then I realized okay that's to open the door for my own healing so I did it I did it for myself first to help heal me because I was not healing. I wasn't doing well at all. Oh, I so, see. Yeah, that's why I um that's why I took that course. And in the course, my instructor, the stu the other students, they were so warm and so welcoming. And you know, my instructor said to me, she couldn't believe that I was doing it so soon after. She said, Regina, I wouldn't have the courage to do what you're doing. And I'm like, I don't have the courage not to. I have to. I feel like I'm not going to make it if I don't do something. So that's that's how that got started. And where did you attend um, your classes? I guess what I guess where did you where would one go to attend, you know, these um, type of classes? Life, Life Institute. Okay. Life Institute. And I got my certification. And in the beginning, it wasn't, it was just for me. But then as I started thinking about, because one thing I do realize when we're in a difficult situation, we always think that we're the only one right. in that situation. No one has ever gone through what you're going through, which is not true at all. So I realized that if I'm dealing with this, what about other women or other men who don't really have the support system? I know what that's like. And I think, again, that it's really a tragedy not to have that. So as I went through the course, um, um, I started to think about that and I started healing a little bit, healing, healing a little bit. And I thought about it and I said, if there's, my heart would break every time I thought of someone having to do something so monumental alone. 
Right. So that's when I said, I would like to just take it, take the certification and apply it to people. If I can be of any type of assistance, that's what I want. Okay. Now, how did you go about opening up your own practice and your own, you know, place where people can literally come to you in regards to this count to counseling? How did you go about opening your own your own practice? Well, I, I don't actually have a brick and mortar. I um I'm doing it from home. So it was it, it was pretty simple since I'm doing it that way. I'm okay. Doing it. I hadn't that I would like to have down the line. I just really wanted to get myself established first since mm-hmm. I'm new in this arena. So yeah, I I would like to have that down the line where I have a place for people to come. So everything is done virtually at this point in time. Yes. yes. Okay. Makes total sense because I mean that's the way of the world yeah. these days. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everything is virtual. Yeah. Literally yeah. what we're doing right now on this podcast, we're virtual. You know what I mean? So I totally get I it. I know, I know. <laughs> and and the thing about it is what made it so so much harder. My husband passed right in the midst of COVID. Oh wow. So that was, you know, that was even and and that had a lot to do at some point as to why I was alone. You know, because at that point we couldn't visit people. True. Very true. Yeah. This episode of the D Lou podcast is brought to you by Goalie Nutrition. As someone who's used Goalie for quite some time, I can tell you that they're not only very good, but they're very beneficial. My favorite are the Super Green Gummies. The Super Green Gummies are uniquely crafted with a spectrum of essential nutrients such as vitamins A, B12, folic acid, and theamine. It supports a healthy liver function, healthy nervous and immune system, digestive health, a boost to your metabolism, and overall health and well-being. There are no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or colors from artificial sources. They're vegan-friendly, gluten-free, and gelatin-free. All loyal listeners of the d podcast get a special 10% discount at checkout. Go to Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. That's Goalie.com, use promo code D-L-E-W. Now, in your estimation, though, what are the most important skills that a counselor can possess? Empathy. Mm Mm-hmm. And listening. Listening. Because people have so much trauma inside of them. Mm -hmm. Something I had no clue about until this happened to me. I, I had to deal with traumas I didn't know I had. I never realized that to lose when you lose your spouse old childhood wounds mm. all types of things come up i had no clue because i had never buried a husband before and i realized that you have to you you really you have to be good at listening and hearing and i think also my intuition it's on point and Paul used to tell me that all the time because I would ignore it. And he would always say to me, why don't you ever listen to yourself? Every time you tell me something, you're right. Now it's sharpened because of the loss. And I do listen to it. And I can really hone in on people pretty quickly. So now, I think that's also a skill that you need. Right. Now, besides, you know, grieving over the loss of someone in regards to, you know, especially, you know, losing, you know, losing a spouse and I can't even imagine. Are there other, you know, 
you know, ways of counseling, for example, even if it's a breakup or something like that, have you encountered some people come to you for that? Right, because uh, a divorce is still a loss. Mm -hmm. It's different, but it hurts just as much. It can hurt just as much. So, yeah, um, I've encountered that also. And it's 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 different. It's going about it a little differently, but it's still, you know, it still has some of the same nuances because you're you're looking at it as a loss. The person definitely is looking at it as a loss. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've I've had you know, obviously family members, you know, that's, that's been divorced and I've had friends of mine that's, that's gone through the divorce, you know, aspect of thing. That's why I was always wondering, you know, granted, you know, when, when we lose someone, when someone passes away, yes, that, you know, that is a grieving process. But on the, on the other side of that, when you talk about divorce and you're talking about all these things, you know, divorce rates are at a, at a rapid pace right. these days, you know what I'm saying? Right. People are getting right. divorced, yeah, like it's going out of style. And it's like, it's like, damn, exactly. you know? So yeah. it's like, that's why I was wondering, have you as far as have people yeah, on that side of it coming mm -hmm. Right. Because you still do grieve. Both parties grieve. Right. So does the man. Now, what's more important, though? Compassion or understanding? Hmm. I think compassion. Okay. Explain. Because with compassion, I mean, understanding is important, but I mm -hmm. think compassion, because when you're coming from compassion, you're leading with your heart. Right. And in order to assist anyone, you mm -hmm. have to lead from your heart. And that's why I think compassion and then understanding. Got it. Now, I'm sure you know that there's a growing trend of people that is waiting a lot longer to seek counseling. Because, you know, obviously with mental health, there's people that have, you know, their ideologies on why they don't really deal with it. You know what I'm saying? There's mm -hmm. the stigmas and things like that. But I think yeah. now we're becoming a little bit more <laughs> aware of, of of mental health, mm -hmm. how do how would you conv you as a counselor, mm -hmm. how would you convince a client who is reluctant to start counseling? Wow, great question. Um, I guess the first step would be gaining some clarity from them on what their thoughts are about. Mm -hmm mental health right? because I feel very differently and so does the whole grief community feel very different about grief and mental health the two are separate from each other right? where people would say um, make certain statements like that it's not mental health it's a broken heart right it's very very different very different you're not crazy you're sad you're not you don't have mental issues you're sad right. now now people say that depression is a part of mental health again the grief community feels differently about that now if you let it go and i guess that's part of the answer to your question how i would convince because if you let it go it can turn to that right if you don't seek support it can turn to that and it's very very important to be able to, because what I find, a lot of people don't even understand the facets of grief. Right. 
which is where I come in and explain how to get through it, what's going to happen. There's definitely different stages, definitely. And explaining to them what the stages are so it doesn't knock them for a loop like it did me because I had never had that experience before. And when my mom passed, me and my mother were so close because of being an only child. And it it really wreaked havoc on me. But of course, I had my best friend to help me through it. Losing a parent and losing a spouse are worlds apart worlds apart you hurt in places that you didn't even know you had places right so i guess that would be that would be some of how i would try to convince them that one there's no shame in asking for help it's actually a brave move to ask for help so that's that's how i would start off with getting them to understand and getting them to open up. Now, in your opinion, and, you know, in your line of work, you know, there has to be some type of trust involved, you know what I mean? For someone to trust you, you know, to be able to trust the counselor with, you know, some very, very deep and personal pieces of information. For sure. What are the essential components of trust? Hmm. Essential components of trust. I guess I would say you would have to start building that from the first from from the first meeting. Because the one thing is one thing about it. They're seeking you out. Right. So it means that they are ready for help. And or at least have an idea that they want help. So I think it starts from there. The building blocks of trust start from from there and being able to make your potential client comfortable from the first discovery call because I do discovery calls. Mm -hmm. So get getting them to understand that um, first of all, there's guidelines that I have to go by. You know, I can't, um, whatever is personal has to stay there. I can't discuss, you know, with people. So letting them know those things Right. And just, um, I guess, being honest and open and transparent. And, and I think also having, having your clients understand that you really get them because mm-hmm. you once stood in their shoes. And right. I think being relatable builds trust. Got it. Now, provide an example of a time when you've helped the client make significant progress towards healing. I'm sorry. Say that again. No, I'm saying provide an example of a time when you help the client make significant progress towards their healing. Hmm. I have this had this one client that as a matter of fact she was not interested in having she didn't want help she didn't want to get any type of help okay and I I kept 
talking to her. I would reach out to her in an attempt to gain trust. Mm -hmm. And she was really, you know, she she was really, really not doing well. Mm. And, and because I understood its patience, again, compassion, and my ability to see beyond what you're saying to me. And I led her, I think we did the 12 week, we started with the 12 week session. Okay. And by then, after that, she wanted to do another set of sessions. And by the end of that, she, because my, my motto is there is life after death. And that's, um, and from grief to gratitude, that's Mm -hmm. where I will take you. And by the time it was, by the time we were done, she was a whole different person. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hold it. It's very, very fulfilling to know that you had a tiny part in someone's healing. It's really very, very satisfying. Two words that stuck out to me um, that you just said was patience and compassion. And I think when you have those two components, just, you know, in, in this line of work, you know what I mean? That can definitely go a long way in helping somebody, you know, heal no matter what the circumstances are, you know? So that's, right. that's, that's incredible. So when you're working with a group of clients, how do you ensure everyone feels heard? Hmm. I would have to say that's with that's with your with your technique and also and any anything that comes up you address it you address it right away right you so everyone because that is definitely something that's extremely important people in this particular arena, people have to feel heard, you know? So it's doing it that way where you are taking time to answer, taking time to address anything, any issue that may come up with them because there will be many. It's like a roller coaster. And as they say, I never, I used to hear this saying, even just watching movies, I would hear this saying and I never, intellectually, I got it, but experientially, no. They would say, grief comes in waves. Mm. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. It does. So when if you're there and you can, stand steadfast alongside them while they're going through that, it will definitely ensure that they feel heard. Sure. Now, before we get out of here, if you can just give out your website and where people can contact you, social media, and all asset aspects of ways to get in contact with you if they wanted to get a free consult- you know, consultation or anything of the sort. Of course, my website is choosingserenity.org. You can find me on Facebook, Choosing Serenity. Um, Instagram, I'm sorry, LinkedIn, also Choosing Serenity. And my phone number is 609-424-6058. All right. Well, Regina, I want to, again, thank you for giving us your time, you know, taking the time out of your extremely 
business schedule to come talk to us and as far as what you do, your practice and like the, the beginning of everything and where you are today. And I hope that my audience, you know, gets an opportunity to really, you know, hone in everything you did. De- you definitely said. So it was super important. And I want to thank you very much for your time and best wishes to you and all that you do. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, that does it for this week's edition of the d Podcast. Again, I want to thank Regina for taking the time out of her busy schedule to come talk to us, and I wish her all the best on all of her future endeavors. Now, this Saturday, you can catch me doing my ring announcer thing at the world-famous Monster Factory as they present Adrenaline. That's right. Monster Factory presents Adrenaline. Tickets are on sale now. You can go to monsterfactory.org to get your tickets, or you can get your tickets at the door. There is a special start time. Okay, a special start time of 2 p.m. Eastern. So the doors open at 1.30. See all of the stars of the MFPW do their thing in the ring. Now, you can get all of your T-shirts and hoodies at shop.daratlewis.com. You can also follow me on all my social media platforms. So that's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the Real DT Lou. You can also go to Facebook and you can hit like, follow Derek T. Lewis official page. Well, I'm going to get out of here. And as I always say, no matter what it is you do in life, always remember to make it count. See you next time.